If you are someone looking to buy a business or potentially sell a business, you're going to really want to listen to this because hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to know which of the two options, an asset purchase agreement or a stock purchase agreement is the right option for you when buying or selling your business. So without any further ado, let's get into it. The first thing you want to think about when buying or selling a business is what's the purpose of it? Do you want to sell your equity in the business or do you want to sell just the assets out of the business and maybe shut down the corporation? A lot of times it really depends on whether you're the buyer or the seller. The seller is offloading the assets. There are pros and cons to an asset purchase for a seller versus a stock purchase. And there's also tax implications of there, which we're not going to cover the tax implications, but we are going to talk cover the legal implications today. The first thing you want to think about is, okay, are you the buyer or the seller? In most cases, it matters more if you're a buyer, because when you're a buyer, you're going to be either taking on the liabilities or explicitly not taking on the liabilities of that business. And it's not always as simple as saying, I want the liabilities or I don't want the liabilities. With an asset purchase agreement, you just buy what's in the business, okay? If we're talking about a shell of a business, you just buy what's inside or maybe parts of what's inside. Maybe you want the IP out of that business, so you're just buying some of the assets inside that larger business. On the other hand, when we're talking about a stock purchase agreement or when you're buying the equity of a company, you're buying everything. You're buying the skeletons in the closet. You are buying the good things about it too. You know, maybe they have subsidiaries, maybe they have other partnerships that they're working with and you're buying the whole thing. You're getting, you're getting everything. You're getting not only that business, but maybe any other businesses it owns. It could be advantageous to actually buy the whole business as opposed to the assets out of that business. So it really just depends on what you're buying. Okay. But if you're a buyer, think about that. Think about what do you want from this business? Do you want all the licenses? Do you want to just kind of step in and maybe take it over uh, without having to reapply for certain licenses or other regulatory issues that you may run into if you're just buying the assets out of the business? Or do you feel like, oh, you know what? I don't want to deal with any of the any of the liability. I don't want to worry about what these, these people have hidden somewhere else. Maybe they owe money to the IRS. Maybe they owe money to the employment uh, department. I don't want to deal with that. I'm just gonna buy the assets and I wanna move forward. Oftentimes what we see is an asset purchase agreement when you're seeing people buy businesses, especially smaller businesses. But as businesses grow and certain industries, for example, healthcare, you know, if there's a lot of regulation, if there are licenses involved, you may actually wanna enter into a stock purchase agreement buying the whole business itself or enter into some kind of management agreement where you buy the assets, but then you have some kind of management agreement where you know until the license is transferred, you are agreeing to manage the, the entity that they had. There's a lot of complexity to that, but those are, options that you could consider. So when thinking about buying a business, the short of it is that do you care about the liabilities? And if you do, then oftentimes an asset purchase agreement is a safer way to go. However, if you're looking to buy the whole business and maybe any subsidiaries and just continue that business with less turnover and less change, then you know maybe a stock purchase agreement is what's right for you. Oftentimes we're are seeing more asset purchase agreements, but it just really depends on what you're looking to do. So hopefully you have a better idea of when an asset purchase agreement is viable and relevant to what you're doing and when a stock purchase agreement is relevant and viable to what you're doing. And if you are the seller, think about, okay, the tax implications too. You know, if you're going to sell your equity in a business, maybe that's tax less because now your tax of capital gains, if you've held it over one year, as opposed to the taxes you may incur from the uh, the gains on selling the business. These are just things to consider as you think about buying or selling a business. Always consult a tax advisor as well. We highly recommend it. We have tax people on our team that can advise you. Hopefully this information is somewhat helpful as you think about how you want to structure your acquisition and sale transaction. My name is Pankaj Rawal, founder of Carbon Law Group. Hopefully this is helpful. We have a lot more tips coming your way. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please send us an email at legal at carbonlg.com or drop a comment in uh, the comments of this video. We love hearing from you. We hope these are helpful. We have a lot more insight on this way and we wish you the very best.